we're live already. This went live so quickly. Happy Tuesday, besties and bosses. I am so excited to hang for you. It's so funny. Usually this takes a while. I'm a few minutes late because I don't know if you can see behind me. Can you see on my desk? That is my cat, Nala. And she is joining us for today's live stream. She is in a persnickety mood where she wants to play with everything on my desk. So we might have her in and out of our live stream today. Those of you who have cats, those of you who have pets, tell me, tell me, tell me all the things. I think there's so many funny stories about how have your pets shown up on live streams or on client calls or interfered with work in the best and sometimes the funniest ways possible. I'm sure those of you who hung out with me before know that Nala is often coming through our live streams. Let me see, make sure we're set up here correctly. Anyway, we're not talking about pets today, but um, since she was joining us in the middle, I thought, thought fun to hear. And also while you're live, tell me who has pets, who has cats, who are my cat people, who are my dog people. I obviously have Miss Nala, but I used to have used to have the dogs when I lived in LA, so big fan of both. But let's dive into today's topic. So today I wanna to talk about the money trap that sabotages your financial freedom. This is something I've been wanting to talk about for a while. I've been talking about this quite a bit in my personal life, and hey, whoever just hopped on, say hello. Now and on the replay, and this is a conversation I want us to be able to have in this group and to have more of. So as you're watching now or on the replay, I know with Thanksgiving this week in the US, happy pretty Thanksgiving. I know, I'm sure lots of people are watching on the replay, so please, please, please feel free to chime in with comments or questions around this because I want to make sure we're talking about this more, particularly because today's topic is about money and something I believe, and I put in the email, I love money, I love talking about money, and I think it's so important for us to have more conversations about money, just to normalize the conversation, just to take out so much of the stigma that I think can come up around money. I think the more we talk about it, the more we shine light light on it, the more we neutralize it and can to see money as a tool, as an energy exchange, and really it to be whatever we make it mean and however we use and utilize it, versus so much of what money turns out to be for so many people has so much baggage attached to it. So I think the more we're talking about it, the more it just makes it normal and just part of everyday business conversation. It really is so much of business. And so today in particular, this is a conversation I've been having in my personal life quite a bit in the last few months. And it's something that I've been chatting about with clients on client calls a lot. And that's really the this thing we're talking about today, this money trap that I think is sabotaging so many business owners from having and creating the financial freedom they want in their business. So there's like there's so many things I wanna talk about here. So I'm thinking about how to best introduce this concept. So I think what we'll start with, hey Courtney, nice to have you on. Happy, happy, I was gonna say happy Friday, happy Tuesday, it feels a little like Friday before Thanksgiving. You missed it, Courtney. When I started, Nala was on my desk. I was saying I was a few minutes late because Nala's been climbing all over my desk today. I was asking everyone who, um, who has pets and how their pets interfere with their work. So, you know, I'm sorry, we'll get to the point of this live, but um, Courtney knows my, my Miss Nala cat. Um, and all of you will have to like pop some, pop some pet pictures below this live streamer in the group. So to open this conversation, hey Michelle, nice to have you on here. So to open this conversation up, I think something that will be helpful to understand, I wanna share a few concepts and then we can talk about what all of these concepts mean. So first, <laughs> Courtney says, ah. First, I wanna share and talk about the difference between being a rich entrepreneur, being rich and being wealthy, and why that matters. We're gonna talk a little bit about the hedonic treadmill, which is a term in really in positive psychology, but it's going to apply to what we're talking about today. And then I wanna combine these together so you can understand what that money trap is in business, how this shows up for business owners, and really how to pull this apart so you don't fall into that trap, so you're creating that financial freedom you want, and also just some ways to think about money, so you're not just making money, but you're able to create, yes, that financial freedom and that wealth. Um, hey, nice to have you here. So fun. So in terms of being rich or being wealthy, I have been like pawning this book on anyone who will listen to it. I've sent it to a few clients, The Psychology of Money. Highly recommend. And one of the reasons I love this book and 
it's a lot more on the practical side and less the woo side of money and i really love both both sides of money i think money is very practical i think it is also very energetic and spiritual and this book does a really great job of speaking to some psychology of money and just some really practical principles that i think are helpful for us to know as entrepreneurs and one of the things it spells out so well is the concept and the difference between being rich and being wealthy and he describes this in the book really as i don't know if you guys can hear him all of meowing in the background um, she's obsessed with going outside um, when we live in New York City in an apartment building so that's not okay so she's meowing to go outside um, so being rich is really the way he defines it um, or she defines it in this book is really this idea of that is the money you have that other people can see and being wealthy as really all the money that people can't see that accumulates essentially behind closed doors. Wealth is really all the money you don't spend essentially. And what I think is so important here, and I'll give you some examples, but starting to understand the difference between rich and being wealthy and understanding that as a business owner, it's not just about the money you make, it's about the money you make in your business, the money you take home in your business, and then what you do with your money that determines your financial freedom and that determines your ultimate wealth. Um, and I promise I'm going to break this all down because I have lots of examples here and why this is important. So again, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, I think in the online space, again, I'm so grateful that in the online space, we're talking about money more. We're normalizing money. We're talking about money that is made. We're normalizing, you know, how much money is possible. I think all of that is great. And I think a lot of numbers are thrown around without context. And what happens is a lot of big numbers are thrown around that become almost like this is the rich number instead of what is the financial free or wealthy number. And so again, being rich, rich is, that is the money people, other people can see. That being rich is the outer expression of money. So for example, when I lived in Los Angeles, I knew a lot of rich people who drove really expensive cars, but they didn't have financial freedom and they weren't wealthy. They could barely afford to pay rent. They were living paycheck to paycheck. All of their money went into paying for things that other people could see, really that outer expression of their money. And again, this is not about saying don't have nice things. This is not about saying don't have nice cars. I love nice things. That's not what this conversation is about. I want us to understand these different concepts so you can apply them to your business. So being rich is that outer expression of money. Wealthy, again, wealthy is really all of that money no one else can see that it kind of accumulates behind closed doors it's really all the money you don't spend um and again this is not a conversation about spending don't spending i'm going to talk about that like where these overlap but just so we can understand these two concepts and it's also about what you do with your money and that's where we create that financial freedom and that wealth um and so that's that's, for example, I also knew plenty of people, I knew plenty of millionaires, I know plenty of millionaires now, but when I was, we'll use the LA example, who drove like a modest car, like you wouldn't necessarily know looking at them that they were wealthy. They just had, it was really, they accumulated all this money and they were investing it, they just weren't spending on a bunch of flashy things. And then there are plenty of people I knew in LA who are a combination of both. They were rich, they were spending their money um, in ways you could see, and you know buying things and having things and they were also wealthy there was tons of money they had that was you know that they how they were essentially keeping and what they were doing with that they had that combination of both and i think as entrepreneurs it's really under, under important to understand this difference because here's what i see happen in the online space and here is the money trap that i see people fall into and that is really getting stuck on the hedonic treadmill of money and a hedonic treadmill this is um many of you know i don't know if i, I think i've shared this when i was in college I, I have a psych degree and i worked for a while for an author i did all this research on happiness um, before happiness was a cool topic i've been out of college for a long time y'all i graduated college in 2003 so this was that's a long time ago this was like 17 years ago um and we did a ton of research on happiness and one of the factors i promise i'm going to connect this all together with with money all but one of the factors that they find with happiness that's really interesting is most of us have a happiness they call set point and a lot of us spin out and don't feel happy because we're constantly on this hedonic treadmill meaning we're constantly kind of chasing whatever that next thing is and we always need like more and more and more to feel happy, to feel satisfied. And then when we catch up with whatever that thing we think we need is and we get to it, it's like real quick before we integrate and we're just on to wanting more. 
and so hedonic like it is literally a treadmill of constantly chasing things constantly chasing the next marker constantly moving that forward getting to that barely letting that sink in and being on to the next thing does that make sense in terms of like what that treadmill is and i think in the online space something that i notice um that i personally have to do a lot of work around um personally mindset wise to stay off this treadmill so that i can really build yes be rich but build wealth in my business and build my version of success and what we talked about last week around that decision making really make decisions that are aligned to my business my business goals my clients like my version of success I, one of the reasons i want to share this is i know i have to do a lot of work around staying off the hedonic treadmill because i think our online space is selling this idea that that had on a tra treadmill chasing that next marker that that is what success is all about and it's constantly in everyone's face online um and it's not a bad thing like i'm again i think it's so great we're talking about money i think it's so great as business owners we're sharing what's possible but i do think it's creating a money trap where for entrepreneurs this happened last tuesday they're doing like street cleaning on outside y'all i'm sorry for the background noise it is 6 13 in new york city i don't know why we have the background noise but I think what's happening is for a lot of people, it's creating a trap where the mile marker for what is the amount where there is enough and they can be happy and they can feel safe keeps getting pushed forward. And they're on this hedonic treadmill chasing money where it's like, first it was, I just need enough to replace my corporate salary. Then it was like the 5K month. Then it was the 6K month. Then it's the 8K month. Then it's the 10K. Then it's the 17K. Then it's the 20K. Then it's the 30K. And this mile marker keeps getting pushed forward. And part of the reason for this is the difference between rich and wealth, be between being rich and wealthy, right? Like, because there's such an outward expression of money in the online space and like what we can i need the bigger team i need to show the lifestyle i have i need to keep increasing my lifestyle to show people that i'm rich and i think what this is causing again i'm not saying wanting any of those things is wrong i'm all about that stuff but i want to talk about how this creates a trap where if you're constantly on this treadmill of more 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 what happens is you rob yourself of the gift of what happens when you say I've got enough now and you start to think let me keep more of my money and not just need to keep needing more to feel happy keep needing more to feel safe keep needing more to feel that financial freedom keep needing more to feel enough what happens when I start to think about wealth and creating and generating wealth instead of just being rich and I get off this treadmill that's where the financial freedom is a, you're off the treadmill. You're off measuring yourself based on other people's metrics or constantly pushing it forward. And that, that just creates ease. But the whole thing with wealth, um, and there's so many layers to this I wanna talk about. So um, then I'll dive into the comments. But the whole thing with wealth and wealth accumulation, and again, you can be rich and wealthy. I am all for spending money and buying things. But being wealthy is really about what do you do with the money you don't spend? when you have money you don't spend and you're not just chase, uh, wrapped up around chasing a lifestyle which i think is what some of the entrepreneurial space kind of teaches like good money mindset is when it's more like i'm a good steward to my money i respect my money i can be rich but i'm also focused on generating wealth wealth is again it's like all that money you keep all the money you don't spend and when you focus on that hey you need less to to essentially be happy um which ironically frees up the brain space and pressure where you can ironically make more and ironically make better decisions which allow you to make more but when you start to accumulate wealth um forget like even if you're not investing and we're not going compound effect but just if you accumulate wealth and keep more money you also start to literally buy yourself financial freedom something i'm always chatting with clients about is how the idea that what i believe one of the gifts of money is that making more money like the reason i want to keep, like i don't need any more money in my life the reason i want to keep growing and making money is i see it as a way to grow i see it as a way to stretch i see it as a way to show myself what's possible and just be innovative enough to find a way to do it my way um and i see money and the accumulation of wealth as freedom as choice because the more money you can keep the more choice you have in your life and the more choice you have in your life the more freedom you have Right? When you have the choice to go and you have the discernment on what you want to spend your money on, 
Like that is actual true financial freedom. And that's something I want us to think about here and have more conversations around. Instead of just like chasing a mile marker, starting to think, what is like, what am I actually doing with my money? Like how much of my money am I taking home? And then what am I doing with that money? And how am I focused on wealth, not just being rich? Um, and you, you don't have to buy into this opinion. This is my personal opinion that I offer to you to start thinking about. The other reason for this is, and then I'll jump into comments and examples, but something that I find really interesting, the difference between rich and wealthy. Rich, you need to have money to keep, you need to keep making money, you need to keep making money, you need to keep making money to be able to buy stuff, right? It's that external, it's the lifestyle, it's, it's showing people all the money you have. Wealthy, what's really interesting, when you look at some of the most wealthy people out there, you can become wealthy without ever making more money. Because again, it's all about what you do with your money, that take home money in your business. It's all about what you do with it. If you're smart with your money, you can be far more wealthy than someone who technically makes more money. Um, and so what I mean by that is if you make a million dollars, but you spend a million dollars because you're living that lifestyle, you don't have a million dollars. You're no longer a millionaire, right? You just made a million dollars. If you make a million dollars, but you're focused on wealth and you spend some of that, you like treat yourself, like enjoy your life, but you're really smart and you build wealth with that money, you keep having money and that freedom of choice because you keep having that money. And you can make, you can build up wealth and build up a million dollars of wealth making 30, 40 K a year. And I think that's the other interesting thing to see. You can make a million dollars, spend it all, or you can be someone who's making far less, keep more of their money, invest it wisely and, you know, have far more wealth. Um, all right, I want to read these comments and then I want to dive into some more thoughts about this. Let me know if you have questions. I also need to have a sip of water. Let me know if that noise is too distracting in the background, you all, because if so, I need to find out if this is a weekly thing and maybe we'll have to change the nights we do this. Um, Michelle says, hi, Courtney says, yes, and guilty of always wanting the next thing. Oh, um, thank you for saying that, Courtney. I think I think something just to normalize here that feels, Courtney's talking about when I was talking about the hedonic treadmill and kind of the trap that creates in the online space. I think something that's really important to understand, and that's normal, I think this is really how we're wired as humans, right? We have, like, it's also a survival, like, we, we kind of have to be that way in terms of when we get something, um, it's exciting for a moment and then it becomes the new normal. It's a way, it's a survival mechanism and how we can integrate and how we can adapt. So I think it's very normal and very human. I think the trap becomes not, I think this is where mindset work comes in and learning to have gratitude and perspective and learning to understand, okay, if I have more, what do I do with it? How am I living as a result? Um, how can I basically brain hack myself here so I'm not getting stuck on that treadmill because getting stuck on that hedonic treadmill is so human. Um, and so I think pretty much everyone, especially if you're here, right? We're high achievers, we're business owners. Challenge, like I always am on to the next thing in, in some form or another because that's part of growth. And I think it's learning how to dance in that space and that dichotomy of how do we live into always wanting to grow, always wanting like wanting to create more and grow, but not getting trapped on the treadmill of, but I must have more to feel enough. I must have more to actually um, feel financially free. I must have more because I need to show other people that's how I'm rich. I must make more to keep up with my lifestyle. And I think that's the difference we want to get clear on. But I think it's very normal and human to always be on to the next thing. And I think it's very normal and, and I think it's a great thing to want to keep growing. So Courtney, let me know if that makes sense. Because I think that's um, a great comment and a, a great thing to have distinction on. And just a great thing to see where like it gets to be both. I think that is just the dichotomy of so like of life and of so many things and of what we're talking about here in particular. And really what I want to talk about here is we're, we're talking about this idea of as business owners, I think many of you get into business because you want financial freedom, right? And what is financial freedom? Yes, it's making money, but it's making money on your terms. It's doing things your way. It's living into your version of success. And I believe it is starting to have enough take home money from your business where you are building up that wealth. So you have excess money so that you are at choice because the, again, the more wealth, you accumulate and i this isn't like a a thing to put pressure on anyone to accumulate wealth i think it's just a beautiful thing to think about um the more wealth you accumulate the more freedom you give yourself something um 
what is the manifestation babe's name? It's like Karina, I know her as the manifestation babe. I heard her on an interview or something somewhere once. Um, Y'all, can you hear that noise? I always have New York City noise. I really hope that's not too distracting, but I heard her on an interview once and she talked about this question she asks herself and she's a um, multimillionaire business owner for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about. And the question she asked herself was something along the lines of, do I want to feel wealthy now or be wealthy later? And that's really what we're talking about here. It's starting to understand this distinction between rich and wealthy and starting to see, do I want to live on this hedonic treadmill where I'm chasing, chasing, chasing? Or do I want to start to think about like getting my eyes on my back of paper? I can still keep growing, but if I'm focused on like, do I want to be wealthy now or wealthy later? Like starting to think about, like what that is for you. So you can also start to take and keep more for that long-term wealth, which is where your freedom and choice comes from as a business owner. Um, the noise is not very noticeable. Okay, thank you. From where I'm, I really appreciate that. Where I'm sitting, it is very, very loud. So that's good to know it's not getting picked up on the, the live stream. Um, it sounds like they're like actually having a demolition outside my window right now. Um, and so I think that's a really great question just to start playing with. In, like, as we think about like what creates financial freedom and as you start to think about, okay, where I'm at now, instead of constantly getting into this money trap where I'm constantly having to chase making more money to feel good enough, but also to like keep up with my lifestyle, what would happen if I was just good enough now? And what would happen if I had enough now? I think that's an interesting thing to play with. And then also starting to play with this concept of, um, when you start looking at the money you're bringing in, starting to think about, do I want to feel wealthy now or do I want to be wealthy later? And again, this is a question I'm, I'm changing a little bit, but picking up from um, the manifestation babe. And what that means is if you spend money now, if you feel wealthy now, that's being rich. And there's nothing wrong with that. There are plenty of times I choose to feel rich now, to be wealthy now. And that's a conscious choice. But I'm also always checking in with, does it feel good to spend this money to be wealthy in this moment at the expense of being wealthy later? Or would it feel better to be wealthy later? And there are definitely things I choose not to spend money on or invest in because I want to be wealthy later. Let me know if that if that idea makes sense. And I think when you can start to think about your money this way, what, it just starts to change the way you ha your relationship with money. And I think it start it helps you start to see. Wait a second, I could be wealthy on far less. Like I don't actually have to keep chasing these numbers in my business, which again, I think is this trap in business. And I think what so many people don't understand that I know I've chatted about before, but I'm going to repeat this, the money in your business is not all created equal. And there are plenty of businesses that make a lot of money, but don't take home a lot of money. And I'd so much rather you take home more money, but make less of that rich number that you get to show with everyone else so much rather that and part of being able to do that is starting to get clear on some of these things and starting to get clear on like okay what is wealthy for me how am i taking home more money how am i keeping more money what am i doing with my money um what am i spending my money on what do i need my money for like am i just doing this for the external validation or is it filling so much of what we talked about last week with the values and those decisions based on values because the more you're basing your business decisions around this and your money decisions around this the more you're going to see you're building a business in alignment but you're also not chasing things just for those the rich external what it looks like to the outside world um which also ironically will usually help you make more money but i think just to kind of tie that idea in a, in a bow, something I share often is I have a multi six figure business. I take home great money. And something I'm really proud of is I know I could make more money if I wanted a different business model. I also know that a, that wouldn't, that wouldn't make me feel wealthy as a, as an emotion. Um, I also don't know if I would actually take home any more money. I know plenty of millionaires that I take home more money than, um, and I know a lot of people will talk about this. A lot of millionaires will talk about how, and multimillionaires will talk about how they're still taking home the same amount of money they did when they were making two or 300K a year. And that's fine. Like that, that's not a bad thing. Like that fits their business model and that fits what they want in their business. And that this kind of goes back to the conversation we had last week around um, values in your business. But I think these things are so important to understand because if you're not clear on that and you're just chasing that external metric because your metric is moving forward and forward and forward, 
because you have a lifestyle to keep up with, because it's so important to be rich, because it's so important to have that external validation. A, it can be a big slap in the face when, oh wait, I'm, I have more of this external number and I'm not taking home more. And it can be really frustrating then because sometimes in some cases it's, it's even less and then you don't have the fulfillment from doing something your way or the way you want to. And so I think, again, it's just so important to start for us to all have these conversations and start to just get our eyes back on our paper and start to think about like, wait, what actually matters to me in my business? And then starting to look really practically at what is the money I'm taking home? How do I take home more money? And how do I keep more money? And what am I doing with my money? Because that, again, matters so much more than the actual number you're making. And I think in many ways this can release some of that pressure that gets put on. I think, I know I hear this from clients all the time, this pressure to keep chasing that 10K, 20K, whatever number a month they think they're supposed to hit because they think that means something about them or they think like that's when they'll finally feel safe or good enough versus starting to see, wait a second, I can actually make, again, nothing wrong with making those numbers. I think those numbers are beautiful. Um, I think it just actually makes it a lot easier to make those numbers when you don't have all that pressure on yourself and you're not chasing it versus you're, you're just stepping into it. But I think you can also start to see, oh, isn't it fascinating? Oftentimes we don't need as much money as we think we do when we start to really get clear on what's actually important to us and spending our money in that in alignment and we start to focus on wealth not just being rich um okay i want to read these comments i'm hoping this is making sense i feel like this is one of those things i have so many things i want to share about and i want to um hear your questions thoughts and let me know if anything is confusing i'm happy to go back to it um cheyenne says i never carry a wallet i carry a card and some basic cash i feel burdened with burdened with carrying a wallet but i do business and trying uh, turn into a million dollars in revenue. Is that normal trait with millionaire thinking psychology? Um, let me just see. I want to read the rest of this comments. I sometimes feel working free for some interesting projects. I don't get attached to cash, but I'm more attached to skills um, and number. I think something there. So I think I'm, I want to make sure I'm understanding your question correctly. So are you saying, is it a normal trait to um, you feel burdened with carrying that you use, is that normal? Would you mind rephrasing the question? Cause I wanna make sure I'm understanding the question. I think something that's interesting about a millionaire mindset, I have a few clients who have scaled to a million dollars and I, I know quite a few millionaires. And I think something that's just interesting to know is I think there are, the mindset can really vary greatly. And I think what can also vary greatly is um, the lifestyle of a millionaire. Like I know millionaires who have lavish lifestyles and I know millionaires who you would never know looking at them that they're a millionaire. And I know people everywhere in between. And I think their mindsets vary with money and they still have stuff come up around money. Um, and I think that's a really fascinating thing because we hear so much about money mindset blocks and what millionaire mindset is in our online space. And I think it's helpful to see like it really varies. And I think a million dollars in business in particular is not created equal, again, because of what we're talking about here. I mean, anytime any business is making a million dollars, that is a beautiful, wonderful, celebratory thing. I'm all about it. That is a goal in my business. I know I will be a millionaire. Um, so we're not making any of that wrong, but I think it's really interesting to know, like it's the money, like we've talked about this on another live stream. There's the money your business makes and there's the money you take home. And there's also, and what do you do with your, that money and how do you make that money? That to me, I think really changes the actual energy of the money, right? If you make a million dollars hating what you do, or you make a million dollars stressed out, or you make a million dollars and you burn out, that's very different even than making half a million dollars where you're super happy, you're loving your work, you're doing it your way. Like, I don't know about you, but I'd far rather choose the lower number and not burn out and do it my way. Um, and of, like I'd have it take a little longer to reach a million dollars, for example, because um, it doesn't mean you won't reach a million dollars. I also think, again, there's a difference between the millionaire who's taking home a great portion of that million and the millionaire who has really high overhead and is not taking home that much. And neither one of those is wrong. And that feels so important to say here. Neither one of those is wrong. If that is your goal, if that is your business model, I have clients with that business model, like that is not a bad thing. But I think for people who 
aren't making a million dollars for people who are getting stuck in the money trap we're talking about which is constantly chasing and feeling like when i get there i'll finally feel enough when i get there i'll finally feel safe when i get there i can like buy another thing and i can just increase my lifestyle um and that kind of trap of like i just need to keep increasing my lifestyle i think that's just a piece to see where kind of how you make it to how you sustain it and that's the trap we want to try to avoid falling in and just seeing like what we were talking about like both millionaire mindsets both millionaire lifestyles like one is not better than the other they're just different but I think the trap is when you're not there and you're looking from the outside in, seeing those things and chasing those things, thinking it's going to give you something and you know, essentially um, creating something that's out of alignment and spending money in a way that's out of alignment and not looking at, wait, what if I just stopped chasing for a second? And what if I started thinking about how can I create wealth with what I already have? And I think what's really interesting is, again, I think that is also what allows people to grow and scale in a way that is far more aligned and faster. So hopefully that difference makes sense. Um, but I don't wanna knock on on any of, cause I think there are just so many ways um, to get in quotes there. Um, Courtney says, oh yeah, when I get to X, then I'll have I'll really have made it. And, and that's the money trap, right? Like that is the hedonic treadmill. That is the trap. And I think that's the trap in this online space. And the trap with that and why this is, thank you Courtney for bringing it back to um, the topic cause I'm, I've got, I've got Thanksgiving brain. I'm like all over the place on this live today. Um, the trap with that is that mile marker never stops moving. So I think what's tricky is the when I'll get, when I'll get to the 10K month, when I get to the 15K month, when I get to the 17, when I get to the 20, when I get to the 25K month, um, then I'll have made it. Then I'll finally feel good enough. Then I'll finally, you know, fill in the blank, whatever that is for you. It tends to, whatever that thing is for you in that blank tends to be also part of, um, what our personal mindset work is around, but that marker will keep on moving. And that's the trap with this because the marker keeps on moving, which means the chasing keeps on happening. And where is the freedom in that, right? That's when we, like, that's when the emotional freedom goes out the window because you're wrapped around chasing, chasing, chasing. Um, and that's also usually oftentimes when we're so wrapped on the next marker, when we get, when we forget about things like, oh, wait a second, like what does wealth mean to me? Like how can I accumulate wealth here and now? How can I create financial freedom here and now? Because that that is sort of the definition of having something without the the goal marker moving forward. Um, let me know if that makes, makes sense, y'all. Um, one of the reasons, okay, this is what I wanted to share. One of the reasons I think this is so important, and again, I am all for goals in business. My mile marker in terms of, my goals in business always move. Like when I hit a certain mile marker in business, I always move my goals forward. I think that is very different than chasing a goal post that you attach feeling a certain way to. So there's a very big difference between so this year in my business, I will have added either 80 or 100K, we'll see in December, um, of revenue this year in my business. That was my goal. Next year, my goal is to add another 100K in revenue, which we should hit, um, not that I can predict, but I'm, pr I'm pretty sure we'll hit that in my business or more. That is a goal, right? But I am not moving that marker and that like, I need to keep chasing this because when I hit that, then I'm finally rich enough or then I finally can buy stuff to show everyone I'm good enough or that I'm finally successful. That is simply, I am a business that's growing. It feels good to have goals and it feels good to see how is this business growing. Does that make sense? That is very, very, I think, different then, but I'm constantly chasing goals and constantly moving the marker for when I can feel good enough or when I have enough. And the other big difference I see, and maybe this will be helpful to understand it through this lens, my lifestyle hasn't like it doesn't change that much and so while my income will grow and my revenue will grow in my business what i'm taking home what we're like what i use that for is building wealth and what won't change i mean obviously i'm going i'll have more you know you start to have some more revenue like i like to buy nice things but a lot of what i focus on in my business personally is and personally in my life and just is you don't have to do it the way i do but what's important to me and just what I want to have a like why I think it's important to have a conversation so you can just start thinking about this yourself is what's important for me is like yes having a, a rich life and in terms of like being able to buy those things um that, that bring me enjoyment that bring me pleasure that make me feel 
abundant. And I'm very clear, this piggybacks on our live stream last week. I'm very clear on what my values are and what those things are. And I'm very clear that I don't need to keep buying things to be rich, to demonstrate to other people that I have money to like feel good about myself. And I know what's so much more important to me as an individual, and you can decide if it's true for you or not, is financial freedom and the freedom I think building wealth really gives me as a person. And so I'm very focused on as my business grows, my revenue grows, how do I use this to grow my wealth um, instead of to grow my richness? Um, and I like personally to have a combination of both. You know what I mean? Like I don't wanna just like stockpile into money to be wealthy. Like I wanna have that combination of both. But again, I really see the accumulation of wealth as true financial freedom because as you accumulate wealth, that gives you choice. I know as I accumulate wealth, if I wanted to, that means I wouldn't have to work at a certain point. Or if I was put in a situation where, you know, something God forbid happened, I would have the choice in terms of like what options I would have to, you know, to come up with a solution. To me, that's very important. That's financial freedom. So this is just a personal value, but it's something I like to think about with money, which helps me also not chase money because it's not an external thing. I don't have, feel like I have to keep like making more money to keep up with the lifestyle versus whatever I'm making is all good. It's kind of all excess that's getting used for wealth accumulation. And the beautiful thing about wealth, and I think something that's, that we started talking about and I got, I was like a distracted cat today with the noise outside um, that I started talking about is the beautiful thing about wealth is you don't have to make a certain amount of money to accumulate wealth. Wealth is all about the money. Basically you're not spending that you have, you know, your take home business income that you're not spending. And then really what you do with it, do you save it? Do you invest it? Um, like how much, like what do you do with your money? What money are you keeping? And what do you do with that money you keep? That is your wealth. Um, and I personally, I will add on to that. I also think of wealth as the emotional component. So I believe I'm wealthy when I'm making money in a way that feels good, when I'm making money in a way that's alignment. Like I think there's a great book called Happy Money um, where he talks about the difference like in terms of how you make your money. Like there's unhappy money. If you, if you were to like steal, that would be unhappy negative money versus like making money from work you love versus making money from maybe work you kind of sort of like. Um, and I also think wealth is, um, it is, it is the richness that comes from financial freedom and that, that sense of safety um, and overflow. So let me know if, if that makes sense. But the reason, so that's one thing I wanna invite y'all. Again, you don't have to think the way I do about money, but just something that you can play with because I think what this opens up then is seeing like, wait, I can become wealthy and I can make a million, like you can accumulate wealth that builds you a million dollars, for example, by investing wisely without ever having to have a million dollar business. And I think that's just a really nice, like it takes some of the pressure off where it's like, I don't have to keep chasing money to make money to like have a lifestyle. If I'm thinking about this from the sense of like, what am I doing with the money I keep? What if I, what if I accumulate wealth instead? And I think that can create um, just like different avenues to, to create some of the things you might want in your life, which I find very freeing mentally. Um, so something just that I offer offer to you. Um, the other reason I think this is so important as business owners to think about is the more you can start to think about money this way and kind of get off that treadmill, that money trap we were talking about, where it's like constantly moving the marker for like when you feel good enough, like then I'll feel good enough, then I'll feel good enough. When I hit this amount, then I'll finally feel like I'm successful. It allows you to make business decisions that truly serve your business. So I really think part of the money trap and why this kills the financial freedom and your mental freedom is when you're in that, like, and then I'll feel, like if I make the 10K months or then I make the 20K months or then I make the 50K months then I'll finally feel successful. Your brain is all wrapped around that proving energy, which makes it really hard to make business decisions that are in alignment with your values and with what you actually want. Right, because here's what you actually want. Here's your alignment. Here are all your values, and here is that goalpost you keep moving for when you can feel successful. They tend not to live in the same plane, and so when you can start to get back over here and like kind of get off that treadmill, off that hedonic treadmill, that out of that money trap, I think that's when you can start to make those really aligned decisions. What actually makes sense for my business? What does my business actually need? 
like what's a goal for my business that serves my business instead of a vanity metric I'm choosing because I want to try to prove things to other people. Um, what's the business model that makes sense for me? What makes sense for my team? You know, like all, I think they're just questions you can ask that serve your business. And the crazy thing is, usually this will allow you to reach those numbers that were over here on, uh, you know, that money trap far faster because you're making them from that aligned place that really serves your values. Does that make sense? Um, let me know if you have any questions about that. I wanna see here, um, if I have any other thoughts here. This is the last thing. Okay, so this is the last thing I wanted to close with, and this is why I wanted to bring this conversation. Let me know if you have any questions or if anything wasn't clear with what I'm sharing today. The last piece I wanted to share, and this is what feels, again, you don't have to be interested in, in financial freedom. You don't have to be interested in building wealth. This is something I'm offering as something to think about, and just a different way to think about your your money and your relationship with money. But something I do believe to be true is that no one becomes wealthy accidentally. I think someone can stumble into richness. I think someone can stumble into money, but I think accumulating and building wealth and learning how to be a good steward to your money where you are accumulating that wealth, I believe that doesn't happen by accident. Um, in fact, I think people inherit wealth and if they don't intentionally keep and continue to build that wealth, they, we've seen this happen. They'll go bankrupt, right? They'll, they'll spend it all. And so I think it's something that if that, if that wealth and that financial freedom and really what comes with that feels good to you and that feels like something that is in alignment to you and that's something you want to think about, I think it's worth starting to identify that and what that means for you and what that looks like for you and starting to look at, okay, like, do I want to feel rich now or be with, uh, wealthy now or do I want to be wealthy later and starting to ask yourself those questions as you take home money with what you're doing with your money because like if we look at I use I feel like I use Warren Buffett all the time as an example but he's just such a great example of wealth and as someone who it's not like he's spending lots of money in flashy ways he so notoriously um, doesn't live um, you know, spend all his money, but he's incredibly wealthy and he is incredibly wealthy because he is so intentional with what he does with his money. And he so intentionally keeps, keeps more of his money and saves and invests it really wisely and benefits from the compound effect. Um, and I think he's just such a great example kind of here we're talking about. Now, I personally, I don't want to live like Warren Buffett, right? Like I, my personal values are somewhere in between. I want to I want some rich now and some wealthy later. That's like, I'm a good happy medium. I know some people who like want to be more like Warren Buffett, like have all wealth and not so much rich now. And some people just like want to just live and like being rich all the time and really don't care about wealth. And again, it's all okay. You do you. Like I'm not about to put past judgment here. And I think as it applies to your business, I think it's something to just ask yourself some questions around. And just to see what serves you as an individual, what do you actually want? What allows you to have that financial freedom? Which version, like which combination allows you to feel that freedom? Again, this is my personal belief. I believe wealth really allows you to be at choice. Um, borrow that if you want to. You don't have to, but that's that's my personal belief. And then also what serves your business and your business growth um, and your own personal growth. So kind of going back to what we were talking about, like which one of these combinations really allows you to set yourself up for your version of success and actually being happy in your business and liking your business. Um, and I think there's just a scene like, am I on that treadmill where I'm chasing, chasing, chasing? Um, because I'm either chasing a lifestyle or I'm chasing a number to do you know to feel good enough? Like maybe that just isn't the thing that's going to serve you the best and it's worth identifying saying like, what would it be like to get off this treadmill? What would it be like to change my relationship with money? What would it be like to change the story here? Um, what would it be like to even to change the definition like of what this means? And so I think this is just a really beautiful opportunity to, to even to start, to start checking in with that. And then if you see that like there is some form of wealth building that feels important to you, whether it's the Warren Buffett version or you're more like me where you want a little, like a little bit of rich now, a little bit of wealthy, um, 
wealth building, like if you're somewhere like that, I think something to start thinking about then is, okay, so how do I start to intentionally build my wealth? Because again, most of the time wealth, like wealth doesn't happen by accident. And I think again, a great question with that is, is like, okay, so with the money I have, like how do I keep more of my money? Like what, what part of my money here, like what do I want? Like, do I want to be rich now or wealthy later? And I think that's just a great, great way to play with that. Um, some insight here. So I, I shared this on the live. We talked about money and kind of how I personally like to manage money and that comes into my business and into my life. Um, I'm, I have a, I'm just giving a recap for those of you to watch that live stream. And I'll, I'll find a link to that for those of you who want to watch that one. Um, but what I personally, my business do, I have a, a SEP account, which is a, I'm not a financial advisor by the way, so don't, you're not allowed to take financial advice from me. I feel like legally I have to say that. But um, I choose to put money from my business, excess money into a SEP account, which is a retirement, it's a investment fund that is, my business doesn't have to pay taxes on that and it allows me to continue to allow my money to essentially make money for me. Like I think this is like the best residual income any business owner could ever make because it literally makes money for me while I sleep and I don't have to pay taxes on any of that money. So it's kind of pre-tax income for my business. So for me, that's just like money making, money making, saving me money. That to me is wealth accumulation. So sometimes with like my business and just again, so you guys can have some understanding around this, the way I think about it is as I make more money in my business, instead of getting wrapped around like that lifestyle or the like, I need to prove I'm rich or like I need to prove I make more money and like just buy more stuff, and again, I love stuff. I love buying things. This is not to say don't treat yourself or don't buy things, but there are certain items where I just check in with where I'm like, do I wanna feel rich now or do I wanna be wealthy later? And some things, I just bought new boots, right? Like I wanted to be rich now. I love those boots. Those feel really good for me to have. Like it felt great to spend that money and I want you to see like that is okay. And there are some other things I'm like, nope i want to be wealthy later and that goes like that goes into my step or when my business has you know an excess month instead of having my lifestyle like it's like oh now we're making more money let's have our lifestyle like catch up to that my i spend about the same amount of money now that i did a year ago even though my business has brought in almost an extra 100k this year it's going it's going into the wealth building. And so like, it's just a way that, I think it's just a way you can play with this so you don't get stuck in that trap and you still get to enjoy it, right? But I think it just allows, it, again, invitation to you. Don't have to do it the way I do it. Um, but I think these are just great questions that can allow allow you to have, I think just more freedom too in your business because last button I'll put on this and I'll read the comments. But what I find for me is by, asking those questions and by thinking about money this way, I also never feel trapped by my business. I never feel like I have to make a certain amount or the bottom's gonna fall out. I know that I'm always, like at this point, like I'm always going to make the minimum my business needs to pay my team and to pay me for my, which I think is a very abundant, rich lifestyle. But all of, all of the excess, it's like I don't have to keep running to keep up with that number. If I suddenly stop making it, I would be fine because of these questions and because of really focusing on building wealth instead of like just being more and more rich and chasing that lifestyle. And for me, that is like the ultimate financial freedom, right? Like I know my business doesn't have to keep performing for me. Like I know it'll grow anyway, it has those goals, but if it doesn't reach those goals, it's totally fine. And to me, there's so much freedom in that. Um, Courtney says, I like that check-in, rich now or wealthy later. It is such a great question. And um, what, what's your name? Her name's Catherine Sinek, the manifestation babe. This, I totally wanna to give credit to where credit's due. I think her question was a little different, but it was generally this idea. She was talking about, um, I think her example was talking about either taking a private plane or flying first class. Um, and the question her and her husband always ask is it's along these lines, like rich now or feeling wealthy now or being wealthy later. And it's like, do we want to buy these first class tickets do, and, or do we want to feel wealthy later? And I think what's nice about this is it puts you back at choice, right? Where it's like, sometimes you might want to feel rich now. Sometimes I want to feel rich now. I, 
want to buy those boots or I want to buy the nice dinner. I want to get the nice bottle of wine or whatever that thing is. And seeing like, and that's not wrong. You get to be of choice. That's the beautiful thing about making making money and having money. Um, or you get to be at choice to build very intentionally your wealth. I think it's when you feel like you're not at choice that you lose that sense of freedom with your money. And I think that's when the business becomes the golden handcuffs. That's when the treadmill thing starts happening when it's like, I need to keep doing these things to feel good enough to like chase this amount to show other people that I'm successful. Um, and when you're not checking in, like that's when you remove the choice. That's when that freedom goes away. And that's when you start to get trapped um, essentially in your lifestyle or by feeling like you have to keep spending, keep spending, keep spending, which means you have to keep earning, keep earning, and you don't create that that freedom buffer. Does that make sense? Um, so I hope that's helpful for you all. This is something, I feel like there's, we're probably gonna have more conversations around this because it is, there's just so many layers to this that feel so important to me to speak to. Um, I'll, I'll close with this, because this is kind of like, and then I'll, we'll close for real. And if you have any questions now on the replay, again, let me know. But one of the reasons I wanted to bring this to y'all, one of the reasons it's been on my mind so much is I, I was talk, chatting with my coach about this. I feel like I'm in this interesting place in business. I'm so blessed, I'm so grateful, I'm so lucky for my business, for my amazing clients. Um, and I know with where I'm at in business and with um, just the, the level I'm at a business at this stage, I could scale faster. I could choose to do certain things to, um, to make more money faster. Um, and those things are not wrong. They're not bad. Other businesses do them and they're absolutely right for those other businesses. I have clients who have business models that are scaling faster that I coach who make far more money than me. Plenty of my clients make more money than me. Um, and it's something I've really had to keep checking in and around because my business model and what I feel very firmly in terms of my values and how I believe I can best serve all of you and my clients and help them get the best results for any of you who don't know, I'm like so locked and loaded on my business model of one-on-one -on -one work. And I, I happen to believe it is the best way for anyone to get support if they wanna build, grow, or scale a business, particularly if you're a new entrepreneur, but as, even as you're scaling, like I just think it is the best kind of support you can invest in. Um, and I believe in that so firmly, I'm having to constantly put my money where my mouth is, which also means what we're talking about here, it is a business model, which it scales a little slower. Um, like I was talking with my team about this um, because we have to be mindful with team hours. I literally cannot increase my, like I'm at a ceiling right now. Um, we can't like, even if I, like as I book more clients, I have a wait list, we're just at a ceiling until I decide if I either wanna open up a spot or, or raise rates. And that I realize is such a blessing to be able to say that. And I, I don't mean that to sound brad, like I am so blessed that I know that, like great problems to have. But it means I have to do a lot of like just thinking around like what is actually important and just all of these questions I'm bringing and conversation I'm bringing to you has been stuff that I've just been spending time really journaling around like what's actually important here and just thinking about the different layers and I keep coming back to it's like I'm not willing to trade like I'm not willing to get onto that treadmill of chasing just to prove anything to anyone and I'm not willing to keep chasing numbers at the expense of the quality of my work or what I believe in or my clients. Um, and I'm also not willing to trade any of that in to like stop doing the work. I like, I love my work. I love my fucking clients, every single one of them. Um, Y'all know who you are. Like I'm not willing to trade that in for a, a number to like reach that number faster. And that would literally be chasing being rich at the expense of being wealthy. Because again, wealthy, like wealth is like, I'm wealthy because of what I'm choosing to do with my take home money. Like I'm building that wealth and that freedom. But I also think wealth is like, wealth is an emotional thing, right? Like it's what you do with that money, literally in terms of like, I love my work. Like that feels wealthy to me. I love my clients. I love my business model. And I think it's, and it's like, do I want to choose that? Or do I want to choose something that feels out of alignment to chase that external thing? Um, so this is very transparent with y'all. I didn't know I was gonna share this all with y'all. Um, probably heard me share bits and pieces of it. 
But this is this is just what I believe and why I think this is such an important conversation for all of us to have because I, I frankly think not enough people in the online space are talking about this because so often the conversation is just grow, 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 chase the next goal, chase the next goal, chase the next goal at the expense of wealth um, in, in various different forms. So I hope that will give you some things to think about. Courtney says, got to run, but great info as always. Have a wonderful holiday. Happy, happy holidays and happy Thanksgiving. Love you. Um, for all of you, I hope this gives you some things to think about, just some questions to ask, some things to play with, and just a different ways to look at where you're at in your business so that you're not chasing that next metric and you can really grow intentionally instead of growing from a place of chasing and starting to look at your money from this place of rich versus wealthy and finding that combination that balance of rich and wealthy that works for you so you can be really intentional with your money and then again so you can start to think about how do I create that freedom of choice with my money within that that dance within that balance of the two so that you can not just have money but have the freedom and the financial freedom in your business. So I hope this was helpful for you. I love y'all. It is Thanksgiving week, so happy Thanksgiving. I will close by saying thank you all so much for being a part of this community, for having these conversations with me. I am so grateful for all of you. I will have some things in here for you on Thanksgiving and I'll be back next week with another live stream for y'all. Bye.